Planning is said to be the most important tool that can be used to achieve desired results. It is for this reason that the government of Zambia put in place the Zambia Institute of Planners, a professional corporate body established by the enactment of the Urban and Regional Planners Act No. 4 of 2011 of the Laws of Zambia, whose purpose is to advance the science and art of planning, including town and country and spatial planning in public interest. The Zambia Institute of Planners is responsible for maintaining and promoting professional standards and accrediting planners, students of planning, including learning institutions offering professional planning courses in Zambia. And in August this year, the Zambia Institute of Planners held its third national planning conference and annual general meeting in Livingston, with the first two having been held in Kitwe and Siavonga respectively. Deriving from its theme of promoting resilient towns through productivity, the Zambia Institute of Planners, through its corporate social responsibility aspect, thought it wise to plant trees prior to the main conference in the tourist capital to enhance beauty as well as contribute positively to the environment. I wish to commend uh the convenience of this function for this initiative. Trees like what uh, Mr. Mibenge said are extremely important. First of all, trees are part of the hydrological cycle or the water cycle. If you look at the photosynthesis equation, you have carbon dioxide added to water. And you can see clear that apart from producing food in the form of carbohydrates, Trees also add to the supply of oxygen. Zambia Institute of Planners President Kupa Jibomba said planners must be wary of the threats to the development achieved so far in the country. Times have changed over the years. Things have improved. We have new, change, we have new threats and one of the biggest threats that we face is that we have a changing climate that has the potential to wipe out all this progress that we have made over the years. And Honorable Minister, ladies and gentlemen, this is the reason why we chose resilient and productivity as a theme for this year. Now that we have arrived, we have taken our place in the development of our country. What do we need to do next? We have arrived, but the problems that were created before we came will not go away by themselves. Someone needs to begin to take action. Policies begin, need to begin to change. Laws have changed. Have our attitudes changed? Are we doing enough to change our attitudes? Particularly, I'm speaking now to professional planners. How are we playing our part to transform our cities? To make it possible that even with a changing climate, there is still room to create a future we can all be proud of. We have the Agenda 2063, which talks about the Africa that we want. Then we have the Soviet National Development and, and Vision 2030, that all talk about not leaving anyone behind and accelerating economic and social development for all. Mr. Jibomba is also impressed with the massive infrastructure development that government is undertaking in the country. The urbanization policy is currently being developed by the Ministry of Local Government, and we are happy with the progress that, it, that has been made so far but we are deeply concerned at the slow pace in completing the preparation of the urban and regional planning regulations. On organizational capacity development of planning authorities to manage planning processes and urbanization, we appeal for increased funding to planning authorities for them to strengthen the use of technology and drive planning decisions using technology using technology-based decision tools such as geographic information systems. We, we take note of the huge investments in infrastructure development across the country, and we commend the government for those efforts. We have good roads, we have a number of bridges, we have a number of health institutions, we have a number of educational institutions, but we also recognize that the role of professional planners in creating integration of this infrastructure has not fully occurred. A good example, Honorable Minister, is here in Livingston, where we have an airport, where maybe at most you have two or three flights landing in a day. The cost of services at the airport, even for a soft drink, would be as high as 30 kwacha. And yet, if you walk five, just two kilometers away from the airport, you will buy the same drink for nine kwacha. This also points to lack of integration and also creating spaces that are more competitive. I would rather buy my drink outside the airport because I'll save at least 21 kwacha. 
The provincial minister, Edify Hamugale, who was guest of honor, challenged planners to come up with world-class cities. So we have a lot of new districts. What's the total now? Who knows? What is the total number of districts in Zambia? Are you planners? <laughs> we have a lot of new districts in this country. And it's these new districts that give you, the planners, an opportunity to put up organized human settlements. Because the older cities are difficult to, to, to handle in that you've got to reverse the old infrastructure. But if I give you a, a district like Chipangali, Chasefu, you have an opportunity to put a world-class town, as we saw in the case of Kalumbila. So really, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to, in the future, look back and say, when I was a planner, we did the following, and that's why Chipangali is looking like this, that's why Pemba is looking like this, that's why Kazungula is looking so nice, because you were there. You must do everything possible to ensure that we don't allow shanty compounds to develop in new towns. Let's do that, we can. The older cities are much, much more difficult to manage in this context. But for the new ones, you can resist that. Dr. Hamogale also challenged planners to develop new political boundaries to factor in new districts. We also need, as planners, and I'm speaking to physical planners, to generate new maps. And in this regard, we need new political maps, political boundaries. We need maps that will show boundaries of the new districts. What we have are extremely old. I, I don't think Chipangala appears there. I don't even think those that were uh, declared by President Mwanawasa, like, uh, uh, say, Shangombo and Kaputa, are even appearing on the maps. They're still appearing as Kasama. They're still appearing as Senanga. So we need to generate maps that will show new boundaries of the new districts. We're not worried about physical maps which show rivers, mountains, and the like, because th those are always there. But what has changed is as a result of these new districts. And looking into the future, we expect new infrastructure to develop in those areas, a new built environment, if you like. So let's produce uh, new maps to accommodate these interests. Southern Province Deputy Permanent Secretary Kennedy Mubanga assured the delegates that the provincial administration values planners. I want also uh, to assure you that the provincial administration continues to attach a lot of uh, commitment to planning. The Honorable Minister here had a very, very tight program. If you, those of you that visited him, would, would, he would have told you but he, he realized that this conference is so important. And that's why he directed us. You see, Southern Province, all the sector planners, they were supposed to be in Monze. He made the directive that, no, cancel that program. Let everyone go where? To the planning conference. And, and although it's painful, I'm going to reschedule my program. I'm going to be there with the planners. So we need to know that the Honorable Minister, uh, someone was saying he, he needs to be conferred with honorary membership. He's already a planner. Being the city father, Livingston Mayor Eugene Mapo, in welcoming the planners, challenged them to replant shanty compounds in the country. It is not just supposed to be a conference as usual. And planners, the face you see in various towns where you come from, it depicts either the works of the previous planners or your works. Now, if the town is not looking good, it means you as a planner, you have a lot of work to do. You have a lot of work to do. Now, there are key things that you must understand in your profession. All those from academia, from private public sectors, you must understand that you have a duty to make this country what it must be. We have, Honorable Minister, places like Zeko, Mrs. and Kanyama, those must be planned. 
they must be planned. So you must partner with a lot of investors who can actually erase the whole co compound, put up an upstairs building, give them keys. They will leave a lot of land for you to replant and do other investments. It should just not be work as usual. Among other keynote speakers was University of Zambia lecturer Dr. Gilbert Siame, whose presentation was meant to draw attention to decision makers on the forgotten roles of planning. And you understand and agree with me that planning was established way back as a field that will really protect public interest. Avoid pollution, get resources well distributed, push social justice ends and all those kind of things. And in this case, we have an obligation to have accurate information and we have an obligation to ensure public involvement in our planning activities. Then as planners also have a responsibility uh, to our employers and our clients. And I mean communities, I mean private friends, I mean the government. And what we need to deliver, we need independent professional judgment based on accurate information and based on public interest. The public interest coming in, in this case through public engagement and public involvement. And renowned economist and business consultant Jibamba Kanyama gave a talk on transformative leadership and management for future cities and towns. I want to challenge you as planners. What vision runs into your mind? Now forget about the resource availability. Remember that money follows a good plan. Not a plan following money. But money follows a good plan. Wherever there is a plan, money is found. And just like God said, when God had made the world, do you know what he said? After he created everything, do you know what he said, God? Do you remember? He made the earth, he made the sun, he made everything, and then he looked at his creation. What did he say? Do you remember? He said, it is good. He could never have said it is good unless he first of all visualized mentally what he had to create. He planned the earth. He planned it. <laughs> and he looked down on it and said, it is good. It's a, it's, it's a clear reflection of my vision. What do visionaries do there for? Visionaries, they declare business transforming ideas. They don't look at the resources availability. They dream and they say, this is what we want to see in Lusaka. The key sponsors, Kalumbila Town Development Corporation, emphasize the need to consider business sustainability when planning cities and towns you need, you need to take in consideration that people are not going to live as individuals, but they're going to live with other people. When you're designing a new area as well, business and economics sustainability should be considered. And so even when you are building uh, a, new, a new city or you're building a new town, you don't only have to think about where are we going to put the civic center. But you also have to think what kind of business will come and generate uh, economic activities in this area. Protection of uh, nature and the environment. So as a planner, you are a custodian of uh, the open environment. So all those things are things that you need to consider uh, as you are developing. The Zambia Institute of Planners, whose membership is more than 300, has a vision to create livable places through quality planning and practice. The body also promotes professional development and networking opportunities. 